All right, for this lesson, we're going to talk about life cycle events. Now, what exactly are life cycle events? In view, whenever the view instance is going to create itself, it's going to look at the DOM, it's going to create its data variables, it's going to mount itself to the actual HTML. When view goes through all of those different steps, it goes through what are called life cycle events. For instance, a couple of really quick ones are created. So as soon as this view instance gets created, it is going to run this lifecycle event. What this also can do is when it gets mounted and another lifecycle event is destroyed and updated. So when view runs through these things, we can go ahead and tell view to do certain things during that section of our application. And let's take a look at this really gigantic lifecycle diagram. Now, I know this is a pretty big, uh, long diagram, but what I want to focus on here are the lifecycle events. And these are the red uh, sections here. Now, when we do new view, we're going to run through our application, and then there's a lifecycle event called before create, and then there's a lifecycle event called created. And then it'll go through all these things, mount itself, and it will check for updates. And then also on destroyed, there's a lifecycle event. Now let's take a look at what this actually means for us when we're building our application. We'll swing back over to the code. Let's say we had a little bit of code to go get data from somewhere, right? Let's say we have a methods and inside of methods, we're going to say get users and we'll create a function for this. And we'll say, well, we'll just return an array of some users. And it doesn't really matter what we put here. We don't really need this. Okay, so we have an array of users here. We're gonna create an element. Oh, I didn't even put that in there. Element data. And data is going to have a users, which is null. Okay, now we have to run this get users and we wanna do it when we load up our application so that we can show users in our application as soon as a person lands. Where do we actually do this? We can use the lifecycle events here. So we have data, we have methods, and then we also have created. And in this created function, we can call this.getUsers. Now this is where you're gonna put things to run when your application gets started. Compare this to, let's say if we had this in just vanilla JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript way, and I've seen this happen a couple different times when I jump into another person's project or anything like that. Let's say we have a function called get users and it does gets the users. Now, if we're looking at our application, this function gets hoisted to the top, which means we can use this anywhere in our JavaScript code. So I've seen people at the very top say get users, but I've also seen developers that will put this at the bottom of their code. So they'll register all their functions at the top, and then at the bottom, like maybe 50, 20, 30 lines down, they'll say get users. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I'm at the top of this page, I see functions, functions, functions. I don't really know where they're calling get users, actually. I'd have to do control F, find it wherever it is, but not the cleanest way to do things. So we can thank Vue for the lifecycle events where it organizes things into our application really nicely. We have data. We have our methods, and now we can see on created, this is what happens when our application starts up. So let's do a little bit more with these. I'm gonna remove get users, we don't need it. We are gonna get rid of this created. And let's create a data variable called count, and we'll start it at zero. And for methods, we'll create one called increment count as a function. And what that does is it's gonna say this dot count is plus equals one. So we'll just increment it up one every single time. Now let's drop this into our application count. And now let's split things side by side. We'll get this back in. All right, so our count here is zero. Very good. Now, uh, let's get rid of all that. Now, when we want to go and say this.count, let's increment that count. We'll create a button real quick. A class is button is info and V on click. Or if you don't like the shorthand, which I personally do at click equals increment count update. 
So now if we click this button, we are incrementing the count. Very nice. There's created. So let's go ahead and say on created this dot increment. And let's see what happens here. Save. And as soon as this application gets created, you immediately see it updated to one. So this is really good. You'll mostly be using created to go and grab external data, like an HTTP request from outside APIs. But it's very good to use for whatever you need in your applications. There's also before create. But we're going to find that this actually doesn't work. Now what happens here, let's uh, inspect element real quick. Inspect, we'll go into the console and notice this dot increment count is not a function in the before create hook. And I really like how Vue does its error messages. It's very easy to read. So this dot increment count is not a function, but you know, we already have increment count is a function. So what's going on here? Before create will run everything, but it will not have access to the data or the methods in before create but created will have access to the data and the methods. So the way that the application works, if we go to the view instance, we have new view, it initiates, and then before create runs, and then it inits the injections and reactivity, so the data and the methods, and then when we run created, now we have access to the data and the methods. So just a quick note, just to make sure you remember that before create doesn't have access to any of these, you usually want to use created if you want access to data and the methods. Let's do another lifecycle hook. Let's say, let's go with updated. Alert updated. And this is just to show you what happens when we are updating our application. So we'll close that. Oh, let's bring that back actually console. And let's say this dot count is equal to three. Sorry. This dot count. This uh, this would refer to the window. We need the actual view instance. Let's clear that. Let's clear that. There we go. And let's say app dot count is equal to three. So as soon as it gets updated, we say alert updated. We click OK, and then our view shows the change. All right, that's it for the lifecycle events. Just a small detour, but good to know that they exist because we will be using it in the next lesson when we actually go out and grab real data from an API.